but it is far, far more clear with Paul Grice. Police say his confession, it is black and white. And it lines up with all the details that the Twombly's 16-year-old daughter told investigators weeks ago about the planning, about the murders, about the burial. She said Grice was a part of everything, start to finish. According to a friend of Paul Grice's, Paul was initially detained and questioned by investigators weeks and weeks ago. But for some reason, they let him go. And then recently we learned this about his anti-government views. Almost exactly one year ago, he filed this crazy 44-page document that reads like a Kaczynski manifesto against the USA, renouncing his US citizenship. But no matter what he believes, US laws apply to Mr. Paul Grice, especially when it comes to murder. The sheriff tells us he's gonna be arraigned week from today, 9 a.m., so mark your calendar. News Nation's senior national correspondent Brian Enton is back with me now. So talk to me about this confession, because we heard about Grandma Tiffany's confession. It sounded more like we weren't sure. It was a, she indicated her responsibility. This is entirely different. Yeah, this was much, much clearer, Ashley. We know uh, that investigators were out at Paul Grice's house uh, yesterday, and he lives not very far from where the bodies were discovered, by the way. Uh, he rents a property right in that area. Uh, they went out to talk to him yesterday. What led them to actually go out again? Uh, to talk to him, we don't know, but there was this confession, and I want to read it to you because it was much, much more specific and clear than what we uh, saw with the recorded statement from Grandma Tiffany. The confession uh, reads, according to the, uh, the affidavit, Grice was interviewed and admitted that he was a part of the planning and killing of both Butler and Kelly. Grice admitted that he participated in the killing of Butler and Kelly and their subsequent burial. Uh, so they are saying that not only was he connected to the planning, to the actual killing, but then also the burial. And you remember we were out in that area where the bodies were buried, 10 feet down. Uh, it's an area that Paul Grice knows well. Everybody knows each other in that area. And again, uh, the land that he rents where he lives with his family is, is very, very close to that spot. Doesn't get more clear than that. Planning, murder, and burial, uh, police say he's, he's confessing to. It just makes me wonder, is he desperate to give them everything on the other four to try to save his head? This is a death yeah. penalty state. And so if he's got a good lawyer, the lawyer will say, run to the well first and maybe you'll get a good drink and the rest of them will go thirsty. So the other detail that you learned today, you know, as we learn these things, a lot of times there's some shifting in details. We had a source early on that said it looked like they'd been shot. The two women had been shot outside the car. The medical examiner throws water on all of that. Yeah, this is something that I've been trying to nail down for the last couple of days. I heard, uh, I got a tip about it and uh, was trying to get it confirmed by the medical examiner and we finally did. The medical examiner uh, in Oklahoma has confirmed that the two victims uh, that you see right there, um, uh, Veronica and Jillian were Veronica not, and and Jillian, uh, yeah. yeah, were not shot. Um, so they were not shot. No gunshot wounds. Uh, this was not a shooting. What the actual cause of death was, we don't know. They're not revealing that yet. Uh, but you know, it's, it's more barbaric than I think that we realized. This could possibly be an explanation. You remember, they didn't positively identify the bodies for a couple of days. It took them a couple of days. Uh, and, and this may be, may be a reason why it may have really just been a very a brutal killing, Ashley. It's so upsetting to, I mean, there's nothing, nothing that can make you feel uh, better about this story, but for the fact that you hope that they died quickly yeah. and painlessly, and maybe it was a bullet they didn't even see coming. But given these details, that there was a broken hammer found with the glasses behind the, the vehicle, um, and that they weren't shot. It just makes you wonder, did, were they beaten to death? Did they use a hammer? Were they strangled? I mean, it could not, and there were two of them, and apparently potentially five with stun guns, mm. keeping them, you know, um, yeah, it's just an awful, awful series. Last thing real quickly, um, why was he released? Why was Paul Grice 
brought in and released and then grabbed again after the other four? It's a big mystery. Yeah, it's a very, very good question, and we don't know the answer. Uh, again, he was he was not brought in. Uh, it was He didn't go in on his own the first time. He was brought in almost like he was going to be arrested. They did the interviews, uh, and they then they released him. What they've learned between then and now, we don't know. I will say I've been talking to locals on the ground there. Um, not totally shocked, obviously, by this arrest since he was in the affidavit to begin with, but a lot of sadness because he's got three kids too, um, and you know that you know now they've they've got to sort all of that out. So uh, the whole community is still very yeah. much torn apart over all this. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider, and don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.